Inside this box is a war game that in 2018 captured the hearts and minds of board gamers like no other. Would you like to take a look? Inside Root, you'll find a double-sided map of a forest, a pack of cards with truly delightful illustrations by artist Kyle Ferrin, a clutch of charming screen-printed animals, and a manual, and a learn-to-play book, and an example of play, and exhaustive references for every player, and a stack of reference cards so you can read about the animals you're going up against. I have owned cars with less documentation than this, but this paperwork is here for a rousing reason. You see, Root tells the story of different groups of animals battling for control of a forest, and while all players will be dispatching soldiers around different clearings, all of these animals play by their own rules, figuratively, but also literally. It's probably best if I just show you. At the start of Roots, the board is filled with the unflagging felines of the Marquis de Cat, a pleasingly feeble pun on my kitty cat, who conquered this forest while the birds weren't paying attention. If you're playing these guys, your lot is the most like a normal strategic video game. At the start of your turn, all of your sawmills spew out lumber. You can then transport that lumber to build new buildings. You can recruit new cats. You can move them. You can battle. By building a variety of buildings, you'll be very strong. But through building a lot of one kind of building, you'll get the most victory points that will ultimately win you the game. Now these cats already have more rules than some board games shut up and sit down recommends. So if this looks like your preferred level of complexity, I can only apologize because by the time we're done going through all of Root's factions, you might be dead. But don't worry, because I've got some granola bars. So if you just have them and keep blood sugar up and we'll see what happens. At the start of the game, you're also going to gather the last remnants of the proud Irie dynasty and bung them in a corner. But nobody puts birdie in a corner, the bird player cries. I'm sorry birds, we did. It happened. Now, as the birds, to simulate your capricious government, you've got something called the decree. And you must add cards to this medieval command line every turn. So at the start of the game, you might say, oh, I'm going to recruit, then move, then battle. But by turn three, you might say, oh, I'm going to recruit twice, then move twice, once out of a fox clearing, then battle twice, then build in a fox clearing. And if you ever can't execute the entirety of this line, your government collapses. This is just me giving you the briefest of rules explanations, by the way. All the factions also need to know about crafting cards and battles and ambushes. But if you want to know more, then PDFs of Root's manual, sorry, manuals, are available online. Me, I'm just going to continue pulling you through the thicket of what Root is so we can get to the review. I'm getting a bit peckish, actually. Do you have one of them granola bars? You ate them both already? A third player can control the Woodland Alliance, a band of scrappy rebels made up of the bunnies and foxes and mice that actually live here and want to take the wood back from these two tyrants. Don't be fooled by these cute little mouse soldiers. These guys are the scariest Muppet pluckers in town. The Woodland Alliance build up animals that are supporters and then can spend supporters making clearings sympathetic to the cause, and these little green tokens are traps. Any animal that moves into a sympathetic clearing or strings up those animals makes more and more animals outraged, eventually triggering murderous rebellions that set up little headquarters in that area. Think of the commonplace green of the Woodland Alliance as the first telltale signs of an infectious disease that can and will kill everybody. Finally, a player can step into the supple leather boots of the Vagabond, who's not an army, but a roguish wanderer. And while the forest is alive with war, the Vagabond plays something like a private role-playing game, traveling around, tidying up quests, and dragging swords out of caves, and, if they so choose, perhaps helping to stop any players that get too powerful by committing some light arson. Now, soldiers can't kill the Vagabond, but instead, damage his items, perhaps sending him limping back into the forest to lick his wounds and get the dents out of his tea kettle with a little hammer. And I thought we could actually end the rules explanation there and move more on to the review What itself. about the expansion? The beavers? The lizards? Uh, yeah, look well, look, guys. dude, stop. And what I was thinking is that we'll cover the expansion later, 
But for now, what I really want to do is just review the base game and make sure people know whether they should buy it or not. I want to know how the lizards work. Get, lizards are my favourite mammal. Get out of my review right now. Okay, listen, if you love the hobby of board gaming, then one of the things you love is sitting down with a group of your friends or family and agreeing to shared rules and behaviours that together create an experience that's bigger than any of you. And within that process is warmth and respect and a little bit of magic. And Root, in offering everybody their own unique game to play, offers that joy of board gaming, but multiplied, writ large. Whether you're playing the birds or the rebels, you just have one role in the gaming equivalent of a theatrical production. And in addition to Root's fireside magnetism, if you enjoy learning games and systems, Root is such a treat on a cerebral level. Each time you play, you and your friends will incubate and share observations about this puzzle to the degree that passengers in an airplane cabin exchange germs. Oh my gosh, you'll say. As the cat, the game is all about controlling these spaces where you can build, and so on and so forth, as your group gradually works their way through the different layers of an entertainment onion. And this is why Root's sweet animal aesthetic is so perfect. A lot of people have been saying that the cutesiness is misleading because Root is a harsh war game, but it's not a war game where the most savvy general will win. The game of Root is an ecosystem. And studying how these animals interact is as engaging and surprising as watching a nature documentary. You can see the Vagabond watching a bloody battle from an alleyway, wondering which faction they'll team up with. You can see the cats halt their advance, fearful that a rabbit rebellion will spring up and tear down their sawmills. And in the manner of the very best board games, these little vignettes aren't written down anywhere, but emerge fully formed in your imagination from a masterful pairing of rules and art. As an expedition into never-before-seen game ideas, Root is a blinding success. The first group that I played it with, we arranged to meet up and play it again the very next night. And then again, the week after that, like we were kids who discovered Narnia and just wanted to explore it some more. So, it's really simple. If you want to own the most successful asymmetric game the world has ever seen, or if you just want to own this game with all of this fabulous art, you should buy Root without a second thought. But, if you just want a great game that you can pull off the shelf and have a good time with, we should talk. And you should know that now I'm done playing Root for Review, I don't know when I'm next going to play it. You see, what you're paying for with Root is an idea. And to quote Alan Moore's V for Vendetta, ideas are sometimes bad. Let's start here, on the victory point track. Because as different as the factions in Root are, you all win the same way. And that's by being the first to reach 30 victory points. But to keep the game tense and full of possibility, victory points score exponentially. So placing your first building might get you bump one point. But placing your fourth building of the same type on a later turn might get you bump, 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 five victory points. Similarly, as the cats doing a recruit action might get you one proud kitty combatant at the start of the game, but later on, when you've got all your recruiting centers on the board, a recruiting action might get you bam, 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 five warriors. But what this means is that every player has to watch all the other players in case any of you are about to escape Root's gravity, perhaps spending your action or your entire turn pulling someone else back down the ladder. Have the birds built up a decree so massive that they're killing everything, like the killer in the popular Alfred Hitchcock movie, Psycho? Well then someone needs to take control of a clearing that their decree relies on, collapsing their government like a house of cards. Similarly, should the vagabond collect enough items that they no longer resemble a cute raccoon ronin, but a one-man womble warlord, well then someone needs to go and send some soldiers to beat them up, breaking their sword and ripping their bag like you're a school bully. In other words, to win Root, you need to get points, but to not lose Root, you have to know when and where to attack your friends. But, do you remember how I said it was so fun to watch Root play out like a nature documentary? Well, that's just it. When you start playing this game, you are tourists in this forest who make for 
woefully ill-equipped park rangers when one of these factions threatens to turn into a forest fire. All too often, the player who wins Root is the one who simply isn't attacked when they reveal themselves as strong, but they're not so strong that they can't be stopped, which produces a runaway leader. And that player, they're not having fun because they don't feel they earned the win. And for everybody else, they are at best disappointed. And this is when you have three or four players of equal skill levels. Heaven forbid you have just one player who knows how to spin up momentum with their faction because that player can lock the game down with another half an hour left to play. And this emphasis on momentum also means that if a player has a rocky start, perhaps because they left an important building undefended and it got torched, well, that can make the whole back half of the game feel literally pointless as they lag behind everybody else, clearly not gonna win, and in this grand theatrical production, they become scenery. That put me in a weird position as the guy who actually owned Root, because I'd wanna take it to people's houses and show off my sexy new woodland love interest, but I spent the entire game holding the experience together like a flustered school teacher. Don't do that, you can't do that, you shouldn't do that, you need to stop that mouse! Except I was bringing my own biases of how the game worked to that experience. And in one game, I confidently told everybody to stop the mouse. And that mouse player never recovered and had a bad game. And all I could say was, sorry. And listen, it's not that we didn't have fun during these learning games, it's just that we'd finish a game of Root and go, ah, oh, next time. Uh, we didn't say, that game was great. We said, next time. We were all just craving the familiarity with Root that would let us play this as the rich strategic experience that this game promises with its thick manual and every fiber of the linen finish on its cards and on the box. And the truth is we got there, you know, around game four or five, we all had wicked familiarity with all these different factions and we were able to just compete. And you know what? That was a game I liked less. Quentin Smith reviews board games. He'll be back next week. Another board game. Basically, going from playing Root as a novelty to playing Root as a pure competition felt like my friends and I had been exploring this fun ball pit and then I stubbed my toe on something and dug down and found a rowing machine hidden below the surface. With an experienced group able to wreak havoc with their kinner animals, Root becomes faster, which is good, but it doesn't become any more satisfying and I found that it became colder you see, it means that aggressive plays or clever plays give you momentum, but then you're far more likely to just get knocked back by your friends, which made my turns feel a bit pointless. And also, it just means more games where everyone's points get clumped together, 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 until someone finally crosses the line, but that feels arbitrary. It's so oppressive that the best strategy that I could find is to just play the faction that came last the previous game because that means it, that you can maybe get a bit more momentum before someone around the table looks at the board and goes, we should probably massacre some cats. And I say that that's the best possible move you could make because as clever as Root is, and this is by far my biggest criticism, it doesn't always give you much of an opportunity to be clever. Don't be fooled by this player aid the size of a place setting. You can't always do a great deal on your turn. And that's okay in board games, it just means that you plan your future turns together in a big chain, but you can't predict much in route either. You see, the forest changes so much between all of your turns and players are holding so many secret cards that you can't predict, which means, and this speaks well of modern board gaming that I haven't had to say this in a long time, playing route, I found myself impatiently waiting for my go. Incidentally, it's because of this sluggishness that I actually like Root the most as a three-player game, not a full four. And while with the expansions you can play it with five or six, I would never want to, except maybe as a novelty. And at this point, let's just stop, and I'm going to give myself a sanity check, because am I really giving this game a disappointed review? Just look at it.
This box is a true beauty. Everything has the precise size and look that it needs to. From these lovely cards, to the boards, to these perfect wooden soldiers. Oh my goodness, it took me far too long to realise just how good they are. They're like the supreme platonic form of a playing piece. Instantly readable, classy, touchable, suffused with character. They even sound good. And it all comes tucked into a high quality box that's no larger than it needs to be. Everyone involved in this production needs to take a bow. And yet, under all that glamour, the game design itself doesn't feel half as right. I mean, put simplest, Root is sad when someone's losing, it's frustrating when someone's winning, and when everyone's tied, whoever wins feels like a crapshoot. And listen, here at Shut Up and Sit Down, we're all about games that can feel a bit wobbly and arbitrary. Most famously, we love Cosmic Encounter, which is a mad crush of high concepts and stupid ideas, and it doesn't quite work, but there's a difference, which is that, oh, that's heavy, in Cosmic Encounter, I can teach anybody in five minutes and then we can play. Whereas in Root, I can teach you in like 25 minutes and then I spend the whole game plucking players off the game's legal scaffolding, telling them what they should and shouldn't do. And it still might not be fun for you. I mean, maybe it'll be fun for you, but then it probably isn't fun for me. And, and none of that can take away how cool this game is. Nothing can deny its ambition or its epic imagery or countless nice touches like how the Vagabond can choose their animal like they were playing a fighting game. This design is a piñata full of ideas. A paper animal that artist Kyle Ferrin has expertly breathed life into and in a lot of ways, Mr. Ferrin saves this game. Because of Mr. Ferrin's expert craft, there are gonna be a lot of people out there who don't care about my high-minded criticisms. And we have seen time and time again that if people just really want to enjoy a game, that's enough. So, if you think you're one of those people, here are my tips for getting the most out of Root. Overall, my friends and I much preferred our time spent trying to figure Root out than we did when we'd actually learned the game and the novelty wore off. But the good news is you can keep Root weird. I would definitely recommend playing it with two, three, and four players. I would also recommend flipping the board and playing on the winter side just for a change, which scrambles up all the clearings. And weirdly for Shut Up and Sit Down, as soon as you've figured out you like Root, I would recommend that you buy the River Folk. Where is it? Matt, give me the River Folk expansion. I don't know, it's in the other room! This expansion adds all the components needed for a second Vagabond player, which means the two of them are competing for resources and they both become weaker and, ooh, how does that change the game? It's kind of interesting. It also adds components for an AI replacement for the cat which I didn't like at all, but you can do it. But now we're on to the real fun because the Riverfolk introduces two brand new factions. The Woodland Alliance are replaced with another sticky resistance group, the Lizard Cult. Now, the Lizard Cult's turn begins by first checking what the most common suit in the discard pile is. They become the outcast, and then you can spend dead soldiers, which become acolytes to perform conspiracies, and then you can reveal, but not play, cards from your hand in order to take actions and build gardens to a dragon. And I can see why these guys are in the expansion, because they're kind of bad and incredibly difficult for everybody to learn. And yet, it speaks of how much I need Root to be a strange and unknowable game that I'll happily play as these guys. Give them to me. I'll make that sacrifice to keep this wood weird. But I've saved the best for last. This is what you buy the expansion for, the Mercantile Riverfolk Company. That's right, now we've got Beaver Arms Dealers. Three words that I've never said before in my life, but now I have. They feel so right. Where's my beavers? I found my beavers. See, these guys, I think, represent the very best of roots. They are unique, thought-provoking, funny, and colorful. With the beavers, you also solve a problem in the game because remember I said you can't do much on your turn? Well, if you're willing to pay the beavers a very interesting price, now you can. The beavers set prices for their riverboats and cards and mercenaries on the board and other people can pay warriors, 
from their supply to the beavers. And these warriors then act as coins that the beavers can spend to build shops around the board or deploy yet more killer beavers. And it's just fabulous. In one game I played, the beaver player built a massive gang of beavers that we all threw money at to try and steer them around like a wrecking ball until we realized that in paying that cost, we were funding yet more killer beavers. And suddenly, once again, just looking at all these beautiful factions, I'm thinking, maybe next time, you know? Maybe next time I'll play with the cats and the birds, but with the Riverfolk Company on the winter board, and what'll that be like? But more realistically, maybe next time I'll just play a different game. One that can fulfill its core promise, and when my friends leave my house, saying, oh, that game was great. And so that's the review. Seems pretty harsh. Um, yes, maybe, uh, but I, I don't know. I feel it was honest. I just, I've never, I played this so much and I never quite, quite got a good game out of it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, do you want to just leave this here? I'll keep it. Um, yeah. It, it's just that they could release an expansion later that like fixes a lot of my problems with it, so maybe I just want to... Oh, but come on, we, we say that, oh, maybe they'll fix it in expansion. It, it never, it basically never happens. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you know what? Um, you can keep it all. Keep the whole thing. Wicked! Cool! Alright, man, uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Thanks, man. All right, later. Bye! Thanks for watching another Shut Up and Sit Down video review. Or if this is the first one you've watched, then we've got loads more on our YouTube channel that you can check out. Also, we're on Twitch now. Roughly once every couple of weeks, you can come by, you can drop by, and you can check us out streaming games uh, for fun, live on the internet. Can you imagine such a thing? I cannot. If you like this, then you can subscribe to the channel and you can like the video. And also we've got some other reviews you can watch here, like some, some other reviews of big games you can watch. What are you doing? Oi, that's my game! It, does, it doesn't fit! You said you could come back here, you son of a-